Yeah, I, I think for everyone, um, managed to uh, speak to a couple of the new guys and, and pretty much welcome individually the rest of the group yesterday. Um, it was the first time that the players had been in to the facility as a, as a whole group. Um, these first couple of days are all about testing and seeing where the guys are at, um, making sure that the off-season's not been too good for them and uh, they've left themselves in a difficult place. But, yeah, but great to see everyone again. It's the you know usual story. The off-season seems to fly around and you're back into the, to the action again pretty quickly. But I think for most guys, talking to them, they had a good off-season, they recovered well. Um, of course, a bit of time for reflection for me and to look at certainly how the season ended, some of the things that we might be able to improve on. Um, and I think more importantly, you know, we've seen over the, the course of the last couple of years, evolution in the group is vital. Um, so there's some things in pre-season I'd love to try and have a look at and see if the group can warm to it. Yeah, I, I mean, the first thing, obviously, at this point in pre-season, and I mentioned it sort of tongue-in-cheek there about the weather, but I think we're getting out of town at the right time. Um, seems like there's a, a really cold snap coming in next week. Um, and I would expect and hope that West Palm is in a slightly better place and is going to give us a better opportunity to get through some work. But, look, the usual applies. The... the the basis of the physical nature of pre-season is always there. The guys have got to get fit, they've got to get ready. Um, they've got to be in a robust enough condition to deal not only with pre-season games, but obviously the rigours of, of a tough season. And it's strange as, as I look back at some of the early scheduling of, of the MLS group. This season, again, is something unique. I think we have... Eight, day, eight games in the space of three weeks, um, some highly challenging competition, um, some exciting ventures, of course, into CCC, but the players have got to be ready for that. So therefore, you know, the early part of pre-season predominantly will be about getting those guys back into good physical shape, the, the foundations and structure of the team, and then we, I think we hit our first game fairly early in pre-season um, against St. Louis. That will be a 90-minute game. So, you know, we'll do our utmost to split that game for the guys that we got. And then as we progress into Kansas and, and into uh, Toronto, the hope is that we can have an extended period in those games so that we can, we can start to up those minutes for the majority of the group. So by the time we, we leave Florida, I'm hoping that the, the group and the players will be in a pretty good shape. Thank you, Coach. We're going to open the floor for questions. Uh, Gary, you want to kick us off? Uh, Gary, this is your seventh year in Nashville. Um, I know USL was different than MLS, but you in Nashville. Um, I think there's a lot of fans here in Nashville who haven't really experienced soccer without you being the manager. Um, so how do you feel about that? How does that make you feel? It's your longest tenure in any club uh, you've ever been in. Uh, excited in some ways. Uh, there always seems to be a new challenge. And I think that's a key part of, of, of the development of, of a team. I think there are multiple facets of a coach and what they're being asked of. And the remit, most importantly, when you go into a club, will always be, you know, the key to what the coach has to achieve. But you'll see on multiple occasions, especially in Europe, where coaches are going into a new team, you know, the job of Tony Mowbray at Birmingham, for example. What, what will his remit be? What will his job be? His job will be to make sure that team don't go down out of the championship. You know, that, that's going to be the key to the early part of his job. But 
I'm almost certain that Tony will have in the back of his mind, how do we, not only can I galvanise this group, but how, how do we get to a point where we're challenging and being, um, you know, a silverware contending team on a regular basis? We got ourselves into our first final last year, which I think everyone was, you know, mentally extremely pleased about. It stretches the group. It gives you a taste of what you're after. The challenge for me is, A, to make sure that the guys are still inspired by my voice, what I'm asking. They're still locked in to what we're trying to achieve. Um, but secondly, to make sure that maybe any improvements in the group are taking us in that direction, the team has to evolve. You know, we've lost some players in the off-season that have been incredibly good for us. In, in Dax's case, we don't know the team without him. So, you know, there are going to be some changes in the team that I'm hoping are going to take us in a positive direction. And the pre-season will give us a, a good idea as to whether or not that's going to be the case. Thank you, Claudio. Uh, Gary, um, kind of jumping on, on, on Malaire's question a little bit. After seven years, you still jump into new waters. Which is, Sorry, you still? You're jumping into new waters. Like right. the Copa Cup right. uh, tournament this time with Nashville. Now, in most cases, uh, pre-season start, you know, the same way. You know, all the physical that you were describing, all that stuff. But usually the team has a time to, to kind of adjust it because this player, you know, does it all stuff. But in this case, Nashville has to go to a, a competitive two-series game already to start the season. How different is that for you and the team? What is the approach? Yeah, uh, it, it's a really good question. I think it's a unique situation, obviously, for us. The length of pre-season for us has, has been squeezed as well because of where that first game is pitched and, and our travel for that game. So, you know, it's, it's down to me to make sure we get through what I believe to be the necessities whether that's physically, technically, tactically, of, of being ready for that game. The early stages of pre-season will be all about, you know, the, the build into a new season, what that looks like for the whole team, the roles um, and, and prioritising certain areas of the group. Um, getting two or three new players up to speed with our group, making sure that those guys are ready for... Uh, a challenging season full stop. But I think that part of it is is going to be the most difficult. If I look back at how we've started the seasons previously in the league, of course not in, in Champions League, then I think fundamentally we've always started very well. We've been... At worst, we've been very competitive. So, if if I consider what that looks like as a format for the team, it won't be a million miles away, Claudio, from what we've seen before. I will have to make sure that I tread the line between making sure the players are ready for a very challenging game out of the blocks before our regular season will have started. But also, trying not to push too hard and losing some of those players or putting them in a position where they're not quite ready physically, and I'm talking about, you know, ailments or problems that leave us light or without a strong group. So, it's a fine line. You know, we've not got a long time. We've got to get our mind on what that first game is going to look like. And uh, I would think as the first two or three weeks unfold, we'll have a much clearer picture of, of where we're at and the sort of ground we're covered. Okay. Uh, speaking of those newcomers, I suppose just with Drew and Tyler specifically, what about their quality sticks out to you and, and what's the number one objective for them uh, with this time you're about to spend in Florida? Well, if, if I take Tyler for, you know, the first example, I mean, he's had a terrific season back in MLS with, with Galaxy. He's, he's, he's had a good career to this point. 
great experience in Europe. Um, I think a lot of his qualities, both of those guys, if you look at the fundamental qualities that those guys possess, they, they really encapsulate what we're about as well as a team. They're both very team-orientated players. If you look at what Tyler's assets and qualities are, you know, they're going to be far more uh, positive and, and creative than you would expect Drew's to be. But in Drew, I think we see an individual who has all of the, um, I think, athletic qualities that we we'll probably needed to add to the group at this point. Um, a young player, still developing, still growing, um, out of a Red Bull group that's ultra-competitive, um, but I do think an opportunity at this point in his career to, to try and just mould that that type of personality into something that is going to suit us a little bit better. Well, the hope is, looking at the qualities that Tyler has, he's not just a dynamic wide player who's capable of scoring and creating goals, which, by the way, on its own, <laughs> are nice qualities to add. But he is a good footballer. He's got a good appreciation of the game. We bring him in to our group in a period in his life and career. I think we get him at his best, you know, 28, 29 year old, prime of his career. Um, I, I think we're finding a player here that possesses all of the qualities that we need and needed to add to complement our group. To, again, find maybe a slightly different angle and look to a team at the end of last year that, for sure, faltered, didn't score enough goals plenty of reasons in the back of my mind as to why the facts speak for themselves though so there were certainly things that needed to be addressed in the off season whether that's new additions or in the in my mind as to what we look like and how we approach the pre-season but in Tyler I do think we have an individual who certainly possesses all of the abilities and qualities that uh, not not only compliments Hanny, but I'd like to think compliments Sam and Randall and some of those guys that, you know, have, have got real bright footballing brains. And that's that's not taking away maybe some of the um, thoughts and feelings of how the group looks with the likes of Jacob and, and, and Mackenzie in the group who... Uh, I would say are some of the most dynamic players that we're going to see in MLS. How do we get the best out of them again this year? Gary, um, you seem to have a pretty good uh, number of uh, players in the squad right now heading into Florida. Um, the main question I think every fan in is asking is that with CCC and uh, all, all the other competitions... <laughs> Guess everyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, what other additions do you need and are you getting those additions before, in time, I guess, to, to, to compete? In, in yeah, I, I, I mean, I know I've said this on numerous occasions, but, you know, this time of year probably highlights it more than any. We're always looking and, um, you know, discussing what, you know, the, the, the big questions. What do we need? Can we find it? And will it come at a cost? Or what does that mean to the group ultimately? So I think the simple answer to the question is we continue to look as a group. Um, and when I say group, obviously I mean myself and Mike and the senior staff up, the technical staff upstairs, as to what we could add to the group and, and how we could add that to the group. But I think as we look at what's going on with the team right now, that would probably mean losing someone as well at this point. So you've got to consider what consequences there are to add in. 
and is that piece of vital importance to the team and how does it affect everyone? So, yes, we are, is a simple answer, but it's never simple, is it? Gary, um, when you look at the, uh, at the type of player that you have today, um, of course, I'm sure we don't want to talk about anybody who's already gone. Uh, good luck to them. But how do you feel in terms of what the people that have gone and the, the guys that come in in terms of the, your new team right. this, this season? Well, I, I think I think the easy thing to say, first of all, Claudio, is I, I always find it difficult when, if you look at the, the players that we've lost, they've been around for a good while. You know, I know Faffa was only one season, but he was a, a particular personality and had a great impact on the group. For Dax, I, I, don't, I don't know, first captain, um, you know, I would class him as, as, as a close individual, um, close player that I work with, and, and he gave so much to me and to the team. Always tough to lose. The likes of Hackinson, here since the start. And you can go on. You know, those individuals are always difficult to lose. There's no doubt about it. I think the environment we've created here makes it that way. There is no isolation. There's no separation from the coaching staff and the players. It's a, it's a, a real terrific spirit around the group and always has been. So it's not easy, first of all. The players we've added, I do believe, were necessary and will give us a slightly different look and dynamic to the team. That's the big hope. Pre-season is always a nice time to see that, either transition or movement, because the guys coming in get an opportunity to uh, find their way in the city, find where they're staying, that acclimation, wherever they're coming from. Um, gives them a bit of time to settle in, to get to know the players, and of course in pre-season. For me, and for them, to, to find their way in the group, to form those relationships and, and, and be ready for a very competitive season. So, uh, you know, I do think that the guys that we've added will be a real positive for the team. That hope will be seen over the course of coming weeks and months in the season but the players we've added have, have got good calibre good qualities on on the on the basis of what we know of these players they have all of the abilities personalities um, character that are going to be a, a big hit at the club Gary you mentioned every off season taking a look at how the team needs to evolve going into the next year could you expand on that a little bit more on what that might mean for 2024 and what your objectives are in that regard as you try to hit the ground running in the next couple of years? Well, yeah, without, without going into too much detail, I think some of the numbers, and when I say numbers, the data coming out of the, the last 10 or 12 games of the season post um, League's Cup, if you like, were, were, were not very complimentary for the group. Um, and if you compare them to the front end of the season, where we saw some excellent football and we saw some success in the team, when you start to, you know, layer those, those you know, data points for the group, the things that we were doing well, we didn't really nail down in the second half of the season. And, you know, without trying to say, well, there's a reason and that was a, a difference, um, the important factors are to look at what did we do well in that early part of the season that gave us that success. So there might be one or two slight shifts in how we get that done, but the reality was we were aggressive at home in those early stages of the season. Um, the personnel and the dynamics of the group complemented one another. That there was a nice balance to the team. Um, there was confidence, of course, that is always nice to uh, to reinforce and to, to to that momentum that it gains is something I've said before that no coach can give. It comes from winning. Um, so yeah, I mean, 
that, that there are a number of things that I know internally that I've got, to, I've got to get more out of. The team will understand as we go into pre-season a little more. And I don't want to base it all on data because it's not just about that. The data gives us a good start point. I will have a, a, a footballing view and feel about what went on because some of the numbers don't take into consideration where and what some of the players were dealing with. So, you know, trying to bring that information together and having had the time I have in the off-season, I think, I think there are some things that you'll start to see in pre-season. I'm hoping you see in pre-season. I shouldn't even have to tell you. You should be able to walk into this two or three games in and go, I can see exactly the differences that... So let's leave it there. That would be nice. That would mean that I'm doing my job properly. Uh, Gary, um, last season you talked a little bit about Tani's maybe dip in form towards the end, and you know maybe there were some external effects of that. Um, Tani yesterday or a couple days ago, uh, he reiterates his point of wanting to play with the ball and being more um, sort of front facing when it comes to, to taking on games. How have you evaluated so far from what you've seen from, I guess, the last two days? And uh, what, what is the message here to him in terms of uh, what he's been saying and what's been going on? Uh, obviously, he's a superstar in your team. So what are you saying to him at this point? Well, more than anything, welcome. And did you have a good off-season? Did you recover well? Is your body in a good place? Are you looking forward to, you know, the changes, the new players? What are you seeing? I mean, look, the interaction has been minimal and brief at this point. A lot of that will come down in Florida, and I'm not the only one who's going to be using that time to get closer again to the players um, and, and maybe be offering up one or two things that we've, we've not seen out of Hany before. I might be asking something slightly different from him. I don't want to take him away from the areas that are making him most productive and um, most exciting as well. But, you know, there's, there's, there's a, a development and more so a reinforcement of the group that needs to happen. And, and if there's one or two things that... And I'm talking about subtle things. I'm not talking about, you know, drastic changes in the group. If you look at the foundations of what we have achieved at this point, there's some really good things going on. So I'm not tearing up a page here. If, if, I, if I change wholesale what this team has achieved and, and what, where we've been and what we've done and some of the stats and, and, and the, the qualities of the group, then that would be silly of me. But there are certainly things that maybe even Hanny's got to take on board. And, and I'll be asking him, how does that feel? What does that look like? What do these players around you now... Is there is there more of a, a basis of connection, of understanding from the world that you're seeing at this point? Um, and in some cases, maybe that's just having an extra attacking body on the field. That that might be a simple look, but that's all based on availability and the bodies you've got in the building as well. So it, it's not always that easy, of course, but certainly things that, that we can dig into as we go down into Florida and we're going to be spending a lot of time with each other again. So we've got to have something to talk about as well. Gary, um, how, how feasible it is, I mean, from your perspective and your experience, for Nashville to do what you actually did last year, last season, doing very well in the Big Cup for the first time and then uh, the MLF Cup tournament was pretty good last year. Uh, when you come to tournaments like this year, is that a one in your heart Getting harder than the other in terms of the MLS, Concacaf, where, how far you want to get with this team, and how worried are you by either one? Well, uh, I mean, look. First of all, it's not every year you get an opportunity to fight for CCC as it is. Um, you know, you we've we've competed last year, put ourselves in a great position. This is a unique opportunity, and everyone should feel exceptionally good about the opportunity we have in front of us so there's no way I'm going to let that pass us by so straight away you can expect that 
we want to be in the best shape for that first game and you know make sure that we do our very utmost to progress in this competition. You're not going to see it a lot. You may not see it a lot. You fight for it, but but that's the position that every team are looking for every year. Um, MLS and our, what we would class as bread and butter schedule of 34 games, of being in the playoffs, is a challenge for every team. It's the toughest achievement over 34 games for every team. Um, we've, I think, shown tremendous fortitude to be there in the last four seasons, four seasons of our history. That is a great achievement for the club. And there are many, many other teams that would have loved to have been in last year's playoff scenario, but for one. So I think that's always uppermost in my mind and the team's mind. But then we found our first final in League's Cup. And by the way, what an exciting tournament. It certainly was for us to have the final at home um, and, and for the fans to see a final in Geodis Park was, was incredibly exciting for, for the team. So why would, why, why would I dismiss that tournament alone Maybe that maybe that's something that you know we can strive for again this year. Um, I know there's been some some discussion around Open Cup and what that looks like, but there'll be numerous teams that look at that opportunity of winning it. Houston this year are in, you know, Champions League because of that success. So maybe that's another route to being where we want to be. Where and how do you, you know, compartmentalise these and say that that's more important than that? It's really, really tough. Um, yes, there'll be one or two things in our mind early on. We want to do well in CCC. We want to get off to a good start in, uh, in, in MLS play. That's vital to our achievements towards the playoffs. The other two competitions will take a bit of time to get going, especially um, uh, League's Cup. So we'll see where we're at at that point. But for, for the best of our ability, or to the best of our ability, we want to try and be competitive in everything. We hope that the, the squad will stay healthy. Hope that the team are in good shape. Um, and we go into some of these competitions in a nice, with a nice bit of confidence. And I think that makes all the difference as well when you get there.